Hey all, today we are going to talk about exponent rules. This is something that we have discussed in the past. Um, we are gonna review quickly a few that we've discussed before, and then we are going to do a new one. So we've dealt with powers. If you remember, um, a power consists of a base, which um, can be a number, it can be a letter. So I'll use a letter for example, x since we see that in our first problem here and then it has an exponent um, if there's no number written over here the exponent is one if there is some sort of number um could could be anything really it could be positive it could be negative x is my base so the number or letter is my base and uh maybe i'll, I'll put an example here with just a number so let's say three to the fourth power. So in both of these powers, we have the base and then we have an exponent, which I made the same for both. When you combine the base with the exponent, that's what we call a power. And then any number in front of specifically one that has a letter, let's say it's six, that is called a coefficient. Hopefully I spelled that right. I admittedly, spelling is not my forte, but I'll do my best to make sure I spell correctly. So we've discussed this in the past. And we've discussed how to multiply powers. In order to multiply a power by another power, um, they have to have the same base. So for example, if we look at this first one, in order to multiply negative 2x to the fourth times, that's what that dot means, times negative 3x to the fourth, we can multiply the coefficients. So we're going to multiply the coefficients, negative 2 times negative 3. Um, if you struggle with multiplying negatives, you can always use Desmos, but a negative times a negative is a positive, and we get positive 6. We're multiplying the coefficients. We can multiply our powers with like bases. We're going to end up with the same base. There's only going to be one of them now because we're multiplying. And then the way we multiply, actually, so to multiply... you add. So in order to multiply these powers, we add the exponents. And I said I was going to try and spell correctly. When I add these exponents, I do 4 plus 4, and I get 8. So I could do the same thing over here. I have multiplication for this second one. I'm going to multiply the coefficients. When there is no number as a coefficient, that, that is a 1. So here I have negative 1, and I have negative 2, and that gives me positive 2. We have the same base, m, so my answer is going to have m as a base. And then I'm going to add my exponents, negative 1 plus 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. And so that is the exponent on my answer. We also discussed uh, in the past that if we had a negative exponent, so I'm going to show you this. If I have a negative exponent, I can actually rewrite this so that this exponent turns to be positive. The way I rewrite this is by making this a fraction. You can always make anything into a fraction by dividing by 1. And then I move my power, the whole power, not the coefficient if there is one, but I move this whole power, m to the negative 1, to the, to the other side of the fraction. In this case, the other side of the fraction would be the bottom. So I'm going to move that down to the bottom, and that exponent is going to become positive. And then I didn't have anything... Uh, else up here but so we would put a one so in order to change a negative exponent if you wanted to you would move that power
power to the other side of the fraction and then the exponent would become positive. We divided powers as well. And the way we do that is by first dividing coefficients. So negative three times negative three is positive one. Then we're gonna look at our exponents and we're gonna figure out which one has a larger value. So both of these are negative, but we have to figure out which one is the larger value. Negative one is the larger value, believe it or not. And so we are gonna always do the larger value and we are going to subtract larger minus smaller. And our base, in this case, m, is going to be on the side of the fraction where the larger value is. So in this case, it's going to be on top. We're going to do negative 1 minus negative 4. Take care when doing this. If you need, use the calculator. Negative 1 minus negative 4 is positive 3. And so we actually end up with no denominator on this fraction because when we divide, our answer goes on top. And when we're dividing our powers because our larger exponent was on top, that's where our answer will be. Again, there is a whole lesson on this that we did earlier this year. So if you need some extra help, you can always go back to that. The last thing I wanted to show you is the zero exponent, anything to the zero power or anything to a zero exponent. The power ends up equaling one. So this K to the zero exponent, this power turns into one. So technically the top of this fraction three times k to the zero turns into three times one, which is just three. And then actually that's all we can do with this problem anyways. So before you try these, I want you to ask for help if you need it. And if you are ready, give these two a try and then check your answers. So check your answers. If you got one or both of them wrong, that's okay. But please do call me over and ask for help immediately so that we can uh, fix any mistakes that may have happened. So now I want to introduce one more rule. When we have exponents inside parentheses and then we have an exponent outside the parentheses, that is a power to a power. And so what happens is uh, we are going to take this exponent on the outside and actually multiply it times every exponent inside. So we're going to multiply that outside exponent by all the inside exponents. Negative 3 has an exponent. It is 1. So this is going to turn into negative 3. And then we're going to do 1 times negative 3. So it's going to end up with a negative 3 exponent. Then we're going to have a. We're going to multiply negative 3 times negative 3 and get positive 9. I want to get rid of this negative exponent. So I am going to move this power to the bottom of a fraction. So I'm going to turn that into a fraction. A to the ninth stays on top. Negative three to the th negative three power goes to the bottom, and then the the exponent changes its sign. Not the not the base. The exponent changes its sign. And so then um, we can go one more step, and we can actually type this into the calculator: negative uh, three to the third power. We're going to put that into parentheses. 
it's negative three times negative three times negative three, which is negative 27. If you need some help with that, please do call me over. So let's try another one. This negative three has a one on it. So I'm going to multiply this one times four. So negative three, and I'll put it in parentheses. That's probably a good idea to the fourth power. R, I'm going to multiply negative two times four, and I'm going to get negative eight. And so I want to move this power R to the negative eight to the other side of a denominator or of a fraction, which happens to be um, I would want to move it to the bottom of the fraction. When I move it to the bottom, the exponent becomes positive. And now I can put negative 3 to the fourth power in the calculator. Make sure you put the negative 3 in parentheses. And I'm going to get positive 81 and then my r to the 8 on the bottom. Let me do one more here. I'm going to have a negative 1 in front here. So I'm going to have a negative 1 to the negative 4th power. And then I'm going to have x 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So to get rid of that negative exponent on both of them, I'm going to move them both to the bottom of a fraction. So they will both move down. So negative 1 to the 4th power and x to the positive 12th power. And since I moved everything, there's we have to put a 1 on top of this fraction. I can do negative 1 to the 4th power. Make sure you put the negative 1 into parentheses. Negative 1 to the 4th power is positive 1. x to the 12 stays the same, and we are done. So before you try these two, please do ask for help if you needed it. If not, give them a try, and then check your answer. So if you got one or both of these wrong, that's okay. Please do call me over and ask for help before you move on to the practice so we can uh, undo any mistakes. And if you're ready and you've asked for help, if you needed it, please move on to the practice. There's only six of them today. Give these a try. If you get stuck at any point, ask for help.